Croire au monde, c'est ce qui nous manque. What we miss most is a belief in our world. We've lost the world. We've been dispossessed of our world. That comes, uh, this quote, I think, summarizes quite well the crisis which we are facing today. An economic crisis, a political crisis, and an environmental crisis. I'd like to uh, talk, address fertile cities for the 21st century designed to fuse together top-down uh, developed by uh, industry towards a politics and policy makers, a bottom-up innovation which is desired by citizens and requested uh, and demanded indeed of political decision-makers. I was born in 1977. When I'm in 2050, the world population will have doubled with 9.3 billion human beings on Earth when we re before reaching the peak of 12 billion. But we know that at the moment there seems to be a problem. 70% of the world population will be living in cities by 2015, cities which already consume more than 80% of energy. Our objective as architects, as town planners, city planners, is to develop new architectural prototypes to promote the post-carbon, fossil, nuclear and insecticide city of the future. Cities based on ecosystems, for example, the Amazonian forest, which doesn't emit any pollution, produces all its own energy through photosynthesis and recycles all waste into national, natural uh, resources for other human beings and other creatures. So we need to have bio mimicry, bionics and biomorphism to create beautiful structures and ha using intelligent material in the um, design of new build buildings. There's the lily pad uh, example, for example, the uh, floating city uh, based on uh, plastic weight. This waste, this this uh, kind of floating city could uh, house 250,000 people. People that will have to leave the land due to the uh, rising sea levels and salination of their land. Another project that we've been working on for 10 years now, with, along with MIT in the United States, is a dragonfly project. This is the first prototype for a vertical farm. There'll be, uh, uh, be vertical f uh, f fields in the Manhattan skyline. The idea is to bring the production of food organic food to the heart of the centres of consumption so that we do have the proper circular economy. Another major development project that we are designing for Mosul in Iraq is this of an agricultural bridge which we have provide, proposed for reconstruction of Mosul which was entirely destroyed by the international coalition which uh, encircled Daesh in the historical centre of that city. The idea is to use 3D printers to create inhabited bridges based, uh, built from war rubble. We will be making use of this rubble and making it into a positive resource. And you, this is an idea that uh, this is an idea that we can uh, print in, on 3D printers and we can use this technology to uh, rebuild the five bridges destroyed during the war. war. Now, I'm not new Avatar 2 uh, designer. These ideas are all based on de decentralization of energy use, de-industrialization of food production. Today we're but building these uh, projects to move from the linear type of economy, which uses, makes, and creates 
debt and waste towards a circular so uh, society using everything using everything reusing everything basing ourselves on entirely on renewable energy and creating no waste at all since 2010 we've been working on the Tao Chu Yin Luan uh, project 50,000 square meters tower being built in Taipei in Taiwan the concept of this tower is to transform our cities into ecosystems, to transform our neighbourhoods into inhabited forests and to transform our businesses, our buildings into living trees able to produce all the energy they need and to recycle all their waste. Now the specific nature of this uh, project is to, to try to imi uh, imitate uh, diamonds, if you like. It's covered by thousands and thousands of plants and bushes that's able to recycle up to 200 tonnes of carbon. So it's a mini climate uh, project to change the uh, environment in Taipei. The idea is to make sure that we have all the advantages of living in the countryside within the centre of our cities with private uh, apartments covered by uh, individual uh, vegetable gardens. All this uh, is based on re renewable uh, energy. There's an aeolian solar panel system with triple glazing and the idea is to produce all the energy that's needed for the air conditioning and through to the breathing plants we can have natural bioclimatization of the apartments and using the wastewater from kitchens and bathrooms that water is recycled to be able to automatically water all these uh, 10,000 square meters of uh, gardens in the air. And this is going to be built on the um, biggest seismic fault line in the world and the building will be able to over to, to survive uh, earthquakes up to 10 on the Richter scale. So it's been an ultra high performing building integrating, apart from renewable energy, a very flexible construction system which allows for 650 square meters uh, uh, apartments to be built without any internal walls. There's a a double floor in each apartment so that there can be a, a kitchen or a bathroom on wheels that can be moved and plugged in wherever you, the resident wishes. So this is a sustainable uh, idea and we think this is something that will be able to be adapted as the family unit grows and changes. So it's a very large, if you like, anti-earthquake, uh, earthquake-proof uh, area. The, you can see the building uh, can, uh, it revolves around its axis. The idea is to try to respond to some economic requirements with building this building, making prefab using prefabricated uh, elements made in factories and you can see it's here you you see the shape changes depending on the uh, angle from which you view the building the project is nearly completed this is the upper floors the construction uh, method allows you to have a 30 meters length of glasses so that you can have uh, uh, maximum uh, vegetable uh, plant growth and as I said by way of introduction once this is completely planted up with its 25,000 trees it will be become a real carbon sink within a very polluted city as is Taipei. Our objective is to try to invent new types of sustainable architecture to have them uh, 
patented and to democratize this architecture. And what we do is to try to respond to the uh, requests made by the people engaging us, i.e. the city authorities. This is in this we've been able to reduce by 50% the cost of construction of this building. Another major project we are building at the moment is Gate Elipolitis in Cairo, the capital of Egypt. The project, the plan, is like an island for living that you might find in Brussels or uh, Paris, 250 metres square, which contains 1,200 apartments. What's special about this, it's covered by an enormous uh, photovoltaic and thermic uh, canopy which will warm water for the uh, inhabitants. That's the blue part. And apart from this high-tech technology, we've also built in some low-tech technologies, technologies that we've had for more than 3,000 years and can be found in the Pharaoh's temples. These, these uh, wind tunnels which allows to take the hot air of Cairo under the found foundations and this air is naturally cooled and then it's repumped into the inside of the buildings. This is low tech and high tech and we've built a building that reduces 80% of the energy requirements compared to any traditional building. For Cairo, we've also come up with a philo lights. It's a new type of lighting used with these uh, uh, wind turbines on their vertical axis producing this energy. You can see these solar panels on the main facade. If you look at these panels, you can see a large number of photo photovoltaic cells that mimic sunflowers and they turn to make sure they always face the sun. And this is the interior which is still under construction. This is this major, this big uh, air chimney, a tunnel system. And we also are building vertical gardens as well within, inside the building. This project that we are do is, is one we're developing in Egypt. It costs 1,200 euros per square meter. Meters, it, meter. It's possible because it's a massive project. We're able to produce sustainable uh, architecture and the, the renewable uh, energy will repay the uh, capital input. Now another project that's going to be started soon is Hyperion's six towers with trees. The idea is to bring uh, agriculture into the heart of New Delhi in India. The idea is that the construction will be based on CLT this is cross-contaminated uh, timber that will provide about 80% of the building. Instead of using steel or, uh, steel or cement, we're using re renewable material. And as the building is built, the uh, trees will be replaced. The product incorporates a number of uh, of, of reasonable, reasoned, reasoned uh, architectural schemes, uh, all based on organic farming. So what we are proposing to the uh, idea is to make the inhabitants, the residents of the building, into kind of urban farmers. They will become farmers and produce part of their food requirements. And in our future cities, we think we need to bring the third sector, the hand workers, people work with their work hands on the farmers and to bring them into the cities, into these buildings. This is a wooden entrance lobby and there you can see the ins 
side of the uh, apartment f designed to be from, cry cra from we call it cradle to cradle. We only materials used are, re uh, are recyclable or recycled. And in wherever we're working, we look at the new technologies and whether they are applicable to the substance of our ancient European cities, which are uh, noted for their heritage. Now, the, the mayor of Paris has asked us to develop a vision for Paris over the long term. This vision is called Paris Smart City 2050. It's a town planning a project designed to get away from the horizontal approach to try to, to have vertical intensification. So we're leaving the uh, idea of a grey mineral uh, Paris that's at the mercy of uh, climate uh, change, for example, and to come up with a, a green plant city that bring in agriculture into cities on the roofs, on the facades, on the balconies to reduce uh, about 80% or 85% of uh, greenhouse gases over the next uh, 20, 30 years. You can see this is close to uh, Notre Dame. The concept of this study is solidarity, uh, energy solidarity. Energy solidarity is a concept that we've put in place to come up with contemporary ideas architecturally to uh, transform the original Osmanian buildings. This is the Rue de uh, Rivoli, and the idea is to uh, uh, to build some uh, towers. Uh, and we should have vineyards then in the centre of Paris. The towers will generate the necessary heat and cooling to uh, supply the existing buildings. And along the uh, Seine, we ha have two gates uh, across the Seine. Um, these are, if you like, the Ponte Vecchio of the future. These are designed to use the energy generated by the River Seine to provide energy to light and heat the buildings. Uh, I was talking about social innovations a moment ago. As architects, we ask the citizens to work with us on uh, these projects from their inception. We're developing a uh, way we open up the internal ring and an old uh, railway line, the high line of Paris, similar to that in New York, if you like. And the idea is we're going to have some co-living areas set up by the residents uh, with the help of uh, architects. Along the inner ring, the idea is to renovate the towers built in the 1960s and we're going to add uh, market garden balconies and that will be done with a second skin built of bamboo. Now we're also looking at uh, social housing, cheaper housing and the idea is to try to come up with something to overcome the shortage of student housing. These apartments are just 12 square meters, square, square 12 square meters and the idea is to uh, provide space for students and these cells can be enlarged and expanded depending on the family circ circumstances of the resident. This in the Paris project, Smart Paris 2050, the Dragonfly it's similar to the Dragonfly project. We wanted to calculate how many vertical farms we would need to feed the uh, population of Paris. We thought that if we were to build 20 of vertical films, 150 meters high, we would be able to produce organic food 
that could be redistributed according to the seasons for about 40% uh, of Parisians. This is the Gare du Nord that links Brussels to Paris. We've proposed a district, a neighbourhood based on the living, uh, uh, on a mangrove. And the idea is to uh, use the space between the platforms and the rails And the idea is to produce all the electricity needed by the uh, stations. The idea is to cover the platforms with, with uh, uh, magnetic tiles that would transform the energy of the people walking across these tiles to produce the necessary electricity. We've been working with uh, scientists and uh, technicians and the idea is that on the basis of existing technologies and with the assistance of the citizens, we would be able to build positive energy areas, areas that produce their own energy but that produce more energy than they, uh, produce, than they need and that can be put into uh, the network. This is the our vision for these historic cities in the 21st century and we really do need to uh, renovate and our <coughs> historic cities so that we can <coughs> reduce the use of carbon in the future. Now let's go to a smaller scale uh, uh, pr project. This is something we're providing in Angers, 250,000 inhabitants. We're providing a building that will feed the uh, residents. <coughs> this is designed for the millennium generation. These buildings uh, are self-sufficient in energy and they will also be able to produce food, all the food requirements of the residents. We need these projects and we're using local uh, substances, local uh, stone for example, and we can certainly build these contemporary buildings and they within an ancient city and the idea is that we increase urban resilience. I'll conclude by this project that we've been developing for two years or more now uh, for the city of Brussels at Tour et Taxis. This is the idea of a new positive energy area built on a uh, central building. We uh, recuperate rainwater. It's what, near one of the uh, largest uh, station uh, shunting yards in Europe. And the idea is to build three carbo-absorbent uh, agricultural towers, similar to those in uh, Taipei. This building is inspired by the uh, idea of vegetation as a symbol of the new. It is uh, built of wood and it will uh, house start-up businesses, existing businesses and students and the idea is that all the generations will come into contact with each other and will all put extra efforts into creating these uh, green technologies. We prov we're proposing a microclimatic uh, environment encouraging students and other businesses to work the whole year round in a temperate garden. By creating these vertical forests, we want to breathe new life into Brussels Canal. We've noted that throughout Europe, uh, cities are based on uh, rivers or on canals. And we wondered why the river in Brussels, the Seine, has never been used. We don't understand why the northern part of Brussels has not been a more multi-use, more multicultural area. We think that the future of the city of Brussels will go via this new uh, idea of de dense, green and hyper-connected city which makes marries together the best of low-tech and the best of high-tech. 
I just wanted to conclude by citing Roosevelt, who says that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>